Hello everybody. So uh, this topic is tree installation and establishment. So the um, big thing to focus on, the key to successful establishment is we want to transplant high quality nursery stock plants using good planting procedures. And then of course, what we've talked about a lot, planting the right tree in the right place and matching species in sight because that's extremely important and that's really the most important thing you want if you want to be able to transplant trees and plant trees and and have it work the biggest thing is it's got to be the right tree for the right area otherwise it's if even if it works it's probably not going to grow as well as it should and even if it works it's going to take a lot of maintenance to make it work if you want to um, have an efficient tree planting the best thing is the right tree for the right place so in terms of plant selection, we really want to match the tree and um, not only to the right tree in the right place, but matching it to the its requirements to the planting conditions because the planting conditions um, are going to uh, influence initial survival and long-term potential. So both your short-term and your long-term for your tree is going to be affected. You need to select healthy and vigorous trees I mean, technically you don't have to, but if you want to have um, very um, beautiful, very um, wonderful looking trees, you, you need to uh, learn how to select healthy and vigorous ones. One thing you really want to look at when selecting a tree is the root ball because the amount and condition of your roots is going to greatly influence your transplant success. Uh, you want to inspect the root system. Your roots should be alive, healthy, and not circling the stem um that it's important they can um especially with containerized seedlings because you, there does there's not a um uh a lot of space for them to grow out you will see them in terms of the um in the root ball or or the container soil you're going to see them going around the edges of that um ball or that container that's okay it's when they're circling the stem of the tree that's bad that's uh that's girdling we'll talk about that um if if the tree is wrapped with a with a tree wrap you want to check the trunk underneath the wrap because uh tree wraps can lead to um to um fungal problems they can lead to insect or uh, um insect issues uh moisture issues uh so make sure that when you, if you have the stem being of the tree being wrapped, you want to check underneath that, that stem wrap and make sure that the trunk is still good. You also want to look for a good branching structure. Um, and this is to avoid problems later, uh, specifically um, pruning problems or, um, or problems with, with branches falling or breaking off later. So you want to make sure that you don't have any damage uh, existing and you want to make sure you have a good branching structure structure that you've got um, you know uh, branches sticking out laterally um, from the from the tree and that you see a good solid branching structure uh, making sure that you have uh, one central leader uh, unless you're you're looking for a tree that has has multiple leaders and has uh, co-dominant stems um, but most of the time we're looking for one central leader with good branching structure. So we'll talk about kind of the differences between uh, the types of nursery stock. Uh, there's basically there's three. There's bare root, um, bald and burlap, and container grown. Uh, your book separates container grown into container and container grown. Um, a lot of other places just talk about bare root, bald and burlap, and container but we'll talk about those differences. So this is what it looks like in picture. This is what it kind of looks like in real life. So you've got uh, on the left there, you've got bare root where you can actually see it's just the tree and the roots. You got the containerized, um, the containerized tree where we take that container off and then plant that into the ground. And then on the right, we have a, um, a um, bald, it's a bald tree with the, um, with a, uh, it doesn't have the the burlap on it, but um, it's got the the root ball with the uh, with the um, the wire or mesh or whatever they're using to uh, keep that root ball in place. 
So in terms of bare root, uh, they're this. They're usually the smallest, which you can see if I go back uh, very quickly. You can see bare roots are usually the smallest of the one of the of the uh, three types. They're easy to transport because they don't weigh a lot because they don't have any soil. They're normally planted during the dormant season. Um, usually bare root is on, it, it is really just deciduous trees and conifers. You don't have something like a bare root palm tree that doesn't exist. So this really only happens for deciduous trees and conifers. And so how are we going to plant bare root trees? Well, if you look down here on your right, you have this Arbor Day guide on how to plant bare root trees. So if you want to pause right now and what, and take a look at that, go ahead. But how do you do it? I mean, really, you're just placing it in the ground with the main structural roots near the surface. So you can see uh, on the right there, I've got a um, picture where you want to get that root collar um, just right um, right at the, uh, the planting depth or just below the planting depth. Um, you want to then place the backfill firmly uh, to eliminate the air pockets because you don't want to have desiccation, which is drying out of your roots. So you want to make sure that you backfill firmly so that you don't have big air pockets, but you don't want to, you know, tamp it down and, and stomp it down enough that, that the soil is too firm and you've compacted everything. You want to, you want to water gently while you're backfilling at the same time. And then sweating uh, may be required for some bare root seedlings. And what that is, is uh, before you plant it, basically you, you wrap the roots in um in burlap and then put it in in plastic or something else uh and then put it out uh you put it outside but in the shade and and this will get the um get the uh stimulation going in terms of the buds and as soon as the buds are ready to to um, burst open then you want to get those trees planted in the ground and so that's that's sweating. It's uh, it's not necessary necessary for uh, every type of tree, but there are certain types of trees like birches where that is that's a necessary procedure. So another kind of look at the idea of planting a bare root uh, seedling. So uh, you want to mound the soil. You want to keep the um, keep the crown at um, at soil level to uh, to avoid it rot. If you if you have to spread out the roots, but hopefully you just dug, dug a wide enough hole that, that the roots have plenty of space to spread out. Uh, you always want to dig the hole wider than it is deep. Um, and then you're going to backfill gently, making sure not to bury any part of the tree, just making sure that the roots are covered and then uh, water while you're backfilling. In terms of containerized, or container versus container grown. We're going to separate it and say container grown has been grown in the container the whole time. So if you're at the nursery, you have a container, you've got soil, you put the um, put the seed in the soil and watch it grow out from there. Or um, as opposed to the idea of containerized being that you started off with a bare root tree established in the nursery field, the same way the other bare root trees trees would be and then it's put into a container for a few weeks or month and then sold that way so both of them end up being sold in a container but one was in the container the whole time while this uh while the other ones were started off bare root in the field and then moved to a container so if you want to go over planting container trees click that link right there after you hit pause and so in terms of um, the procedure, basically the big one of the big things that's different from bare root is making sure you remove the container. Uh, the easiest way to do that, or at least the way that I've found when I've had to plant um, container trees, is you basically just want to kind of, um, if you've got the, the, <laughs> the right kind of containers, there's already holes at the bottom where you can kind of um, push with like a uh, screwdriver or something to kind of loosen up the, the pot. Um, the container from it but if not you just kind of want to um, push in at the side so do you know two sides and then you go two sides and you just kind of do that until the uh, soil loosens up from the pot and you can kind of just wiggle the pot off uh, once you remove you want to check the root system and if if the roots are matted which I was describing before which is the idea that when you have that soil 
if the roots kind of look like they're just like circling around the soil. As long as they're not circling around the the stem of the tree, we definitely don't want that to happen. We don't even want to buy the tree um, if that's if that's the case. But if they're circling around that that root ball or that container um, that containerized soil, that substrate, that's okay. You just need to separate them out, spread them out, and you might even have to cut them um, a little bit with planting. That way, we kind of stimulate uh, more root growth. And we, like I said before, we want to avoid those girdling roots that are um, that are wrapped around the stem. A uh, big difference between bare root and container uh, stock seedlings is that container can be planted any time of the year. So here's just a look at the idea of the of girdled roots and what we're trying to avoid. So we don't want these roots where. Um, where they're coming around the stem like we see here in this example we don't want any of these sorts of sorts of um, roots which are going to make it harder for all the other roots or harder for the tree as it grows especially as it grows because what we're really usually talking about is younger trees that we expect to grow and get bigger but if these roots are circled like that it's not going to work because they're going to end up um, basically choking out the tree and not allowing the tree um, to get bigger as it needs to In terms of our last category, that's our B and B for bald and burlapped. Um, in this procedure, the trees are dug up with a portion of the root ball. So, in containerized, um, the difference between containerized and the bald and burlap is the containerized. There's a soil substrate, and the tree grows up in that soil substrate. In the bald and burlap, these are grown in in a field and then you actually dig up the root ball and the soil from the field with it um, usually up to 90 percent uh, of the fine absorbing roots are going to be lost in digging so uh, you just have to understand that that's that's part of the process and so um, your rate of recovery for these sorts of trees might be a little bit slower because the roots will need to to regrow and and respread themselves uh, so you're going to use uh, twine and wire baskets, um, possibly to keep that soil, that root ball, together. And you want to make sure all of that stuff is removed in the process um, to avoid girdling. And if you want to read about planting bald and burlap trees, click on this link. So let's go over some planting techniques. Um, one thing that uh, that we'll talk about is the idea that um, if we are uh, planting a tree like this, we really prefer to hold it by the um, by the root ball or by the soil substrate more than we want to um, hold it by the stem, just because we don't want to separate that stem from that soil substrate or that root ball. Uh, the most so in terms of the hole and making the hole the right size the most vigorous root growth happens near the surface um, and that's that's the idea that is just important in for us in determining hole size so we know that um, that our roots the fine absorbing roots they don't want to grow down into the soil they want to actually grow out and be near the surface and grow out so if that's the case we want to make sure that we make a big hole because once we put this put the um put the tree into the ground with, with the root ball or with the soil substrate whichever one it is then we want to make sure that that soil that is around it is easy for the roots to grow go in so if that's all the backfill of all the stuff that we dug up that we're now putting in that soil has been aerated and tilled and easier for roots to penetrate and move through if we just make a tiny hole then the roots gotta force their way through the other parts that haven't been um, you know tilled up or aerated or, or broke into pieces the way you would in digging a hole so that being said your planting hole should be about two to three times the width of the root ball and then it's gonna slope down to about the width of the root ball at the bottom so your your hole should go like that and taper down it should be two to three times the width of the root ball at the top and then taper down to the width of the root ball at the bottom if you have clay soils you want it to be about five times the width of the root ball in terms of the um 
the opening because the clay soils are just so much they're so much harder to deal with because of that um, high surface area and that uh, and the the idea of the the stickiness of the clay and making it that much harder for the roots to penetrate and spread out that you really want to make a really wide hole when planting in uh, heavy clay soils and just as a general rule of thumb wider holes are always uh, recommended so make the hole as wide as you can sometimes is is not a bad idea the depth of the hole is a uh, is we don't want to make a big deep hole we just want to make a wide hole the most common planting mistake is planting too deeply so um, that leads to stress or suffocation of the roots the hole should never be di deeper than the distance from trunk flare to the bottom of the roots so where the trunk uh, tapers out you want to go from there to the bottom of the roots and the hole doesn't ever need to be deeper than that because we want that um, trunk flare that trunk taper to be right at the surface um, if it's a uh, if it's a clay soil you want to plant you actually want to plant shallower you want it to be um, two to three inches above the surface and so uh, if you can't find the trunk flare if you don't if it's a young enough species that you just have a straight trunk you don't have any trunk flare you want to find the primary roots of the tree and then just um, as a guide put those one to three inches below the soil surface and if you do it that way you'll probably have it right about at the right um, at the right uh, height in terms of drainage for your um, for your newly planted trees adequate drainage is absolutely necessary for successful planting uh, for your smaller trees you're going to plant them site slightly above the original grade and that's going to allow your roots to develop in better aerated surfaces um, there some people suggest putting gravel uh, underneath to kind of um, set up a, um, a substrate for water but you want to avoid doing that because what you could end up doing is setting up a perched water table which is um, when you have water um, basically you've set up a foundation that allows water to collect and then what happens is the water collects right underneath the tree and basically the the roots become waterlogged and and you end up losing um, soil oxygen and the roots end up dying so you don't want to have this perched water table situation which is water accumulating in the soil above the gravel because you could end up drowning your roots uh, other considerations you want to make is if they are contain container or bald and burlapped uh, trees try and avoid lifting by the stem you want to handle the root ball carefully and usually the best is to handle the root ball from underneath the root ball uh, you want to backfill using the same soil that you pulled out from the hole and then as you're as you're going to fill the hole up you want to work the soil around the root ball and add water um, while you're doing it that and it's going to minimize uh, the air pockets and uh, keep us away from uh, desiccation of our roots which is that drying out of our roots uh, once you start to fill um, fill in the hole you want to firm and tamp down the soil to make sure the tree is adequately supported and is standing up nice and straight and is gonna you know stay that way even once you leave and then the other thing you really want to take into consideration is an irrigation schedule and how you're gonna make sure that this thing keeps getting watered because adequate water is absolutely important in terms of uh, tree planting so in terms of transplanting trees so we're going to take a tree from a spot take it to another spot how does that whole process work timing wise we really want to aim for early spring or fall uh, deciduous plants can be moved right after leaf drop so right um, right in uh, late fall right before we get to winter it's a great time to to move them um, and really the idea is we really want to focus on dormant tree transfer so we want to transfer trees around when they're dormant because it's uh, easier due to reduced soil moisture demand what does that mean well basically our biggest thing with trees that we understand is that trees need um, water because what they do is they spend a lot of their time sweating or in their case transpiring um, going through the process of transpiration where they use water up and then the water um, leaves the plant um, as water vapor 
So they end up doing that most of the time, and that's why they need to pull water out of the soil. Well, if they're dormant, they're not transpiring as much. They're transpiring extremely little, an, an extreme little amount, and because of that, then you can. That's the best time to do it because then we don't have to make sure that we have a ton of water in the soil. We can we can get by with minimal amounts of water in the soil, which makes it. Um, just much easier in terms of trans transplanting and just not having that worry about, you know, is there going to be enough water or, you know, the second I put these trees in the ground, all of a sudden it's 100 degrees outside and there's, you know, the, we're in month two of a drought. That sort of a thing would make it much more difficult for the tree to survive. So um, planting or transferring during the dormant season is recommended. When uh, when you dig to transplant the tree, it, it this most of the time with all this stuff we say it varies by species, site, soil type, and all that. For digging um, to transplant the tree, it actually varies little with the species size and soil type. Uh, you will have to do some root pruning, which is when you're pre-digging a root ball to increase the density of root development within the final ball. Uh, this might tempor temporarily reduce your top growth, but that little uh, short-term loss um, should be hopefully outweighed by the long-term gain of you moving um, this tree to a to a better spot. Hopefully, uh, when we're talking about root pruning, it's the idea of um, if we're gonna get this tree out of the ground, we've got to cut the roots at some point in time because we know the roots are going to do that thing where they spread out along the the top of the soil surface and they spread out quite far and we can't take the whole thing with us. We're going to take a, a good amount of it, but we can't take the whole thing with us. So where we have decided that the root ball is going to be cut, that's where we want to um, prune the roots. So if we take a look at this hole right here, obviously those roots, you, if you look at them for this, what looks to me like a, like a Japanese maple, um, you, the roots will keep going but if we got we've got to cut this hole got to cut this tree out got to get the root ball cut got to cut it to a certain distance so we're going to prune the roots uh on the outside of that root ball and and shape it so that ba one we can get the the tree and the root ball out of the ground but the other part of that is that in pruning those roots that will actually stimulate the root growth for when we put it back in the ground and um and basically uh, give the roots almost a warning like, hey, now now you got to go back and, and get out there and grow and, and work hard again. For your branches, as we transplant trees, we want to tie as many branches up as possible. If we look at these trees here, obviously they want to spread out a little bit further, but you can see they're using little ties, um, little things like that too, like this right there to um, tie the branches together to just make it easier to to um, not have uh, limbs snapping off here or there and you know having open wounds and and leading to infection you don't want to tie these things too tightly you don't want to create any compression or tissue damage um, in the limbs or in the um, in the uh, the part where the limb attaches to the stem you also um, don't want to leave these things tied up for very for very long. You want to whatever the minimum amount of time is that you can leave them tied up is what you'd like to leave them tied up. And then also, um, as you do this, you really want to make sure you avoid injuring the bark because once again, that can just lead to infection or uh, or some other disease that we don't want to have happen to our trees. For your root ball. Uh, the size of the root ball is going to depend on the size of the tree. Uh, if your tree is less than four inches in diameter, you want to measure six inches above the ground. And if it is um, 12 inches uh, above the ground for larger trees. So if you think, if you look at it and go probably going to be less than four inches in diameter, you're going to measure six inches above the ground and find out what that diameter is. If it's um, larger than four inches in diameter, you want to measure... 12 inches above the ground or one foot above the ground. So once you find out what that diameter is, if your tree diameter is eight inches and up, the width of your root ball should be 10 to 12 inches per inch of diameter. So what does that mean? So if I have exactly an eight inch tree, that means that my uh, root ball should be 80 to 96 inches in diameter. 
So, um, so if we're so just looking straight across of my root ball, it should be 80 to 96 inches. Or if I'm looking at one side of my root ball, it should be at least 40, at least 40 inches. Um, in terms of the depth of the root ball, about um, 30 to 36 inches is appropriate for most trees. You want to make a clean cut around that root ball perimeter and um, make sure if we have um, don't get clean cuts on roots that we then hand prune and, and make sure that those um, those roots get uh, clean cut if, if we've been using machinery. And your root ball should taper on the sides towards the base. So, for example, if we had a 9-foot diameter root ball, it might end up being only 6 to 7 feet at the base. So it tapers down like that and whoa wait a minute when we dug the hole it also kind of tapers that way so it's almost like we're trying to put the this perfect shape into the hole and that's exactly correct um once uh if we're doing that bald and burlapped uh example this would be the point where you place the burlap and then you tie it on with the um with the twine or the or the mesh or the or the nails or the wire basket or whatever it is that you're using and then you'd undercut the tree uh, after that so we can get the thing out of there and if you want to take a look here I've got a link for um, for uh, transplanting so go ahead and pause and take a look at that there are mechanical tree spades out there here's just a couple examples of what they look like and how they would can basically go into the ground and and just kind of plop a tree out of the ground and plop a tree right into the ground. Pretty interesting looking uh, uh, piece of machinery there and, and just pretty amazing uh, process to, to see. It, it, looks, it looks kind of fun to me. If we're talking about transplanting palms, they're very easy to transplant because they don't, uh, they don't usually... Um, you don't have to get such a big hole because they don't spread out uh, the way that uh, some other trees do. Uh, usually you're talking about a 12 inch radius um, is usually sufficient. So, you know, if we're talking about uh, a root ball for a palm tree, you're only talking about um, 24 inches plus whatever the diameter of the of the palm is. So not not that not that wide. Uh, in terms of sandy um, sandy soils, because, I mean, it's a palm tree, so more than likely what it's in is sandy soils. Your sandy soils are going to tend to fall away. Uh, so it's really uh, critical that you that you uh, manage your moisture of the roots because it's it's going to be hard to keep a good root ball because the sand is going to keep, um, keep falling away. There's, uh, there's some research that says frond, frond removal is good. Um, so for some species, you remove all the fronds except for a couple just to keep the, uh, the apical bud protected. Um, whatever it is you decide to do for uh, your species of palm, make sure that you tie up the remaining um, fronds and protect that bud. And uh, other than that, uh, it's, it's a pretty easy process in terms of of palms. You want to transplant in the early spring or summer when rainfall is good because that's just going to make your life easier in terms of managing that uh, uh, water and, and your moisture management to the roots. So then establishment of our trees and making sure if we look at this hole that they've dug pretty good size we said two to three times the root ball width I think they're pretty good there just making sure now that we don't plant it um, too low into the ground and that we make sure that our tree is nice and straight and as long as our tree can stand up on its own, great. If our tree can't stand up on its own, we've got some procedures to help out with that. So in uh, talking about this, uh, proper watering is just still extremely important and it's, it's always important when we're talking about our trees. Uh, it's a key to survival. Uh, you want to water as needed. Not the, your book talks about not, not by a clock and not by a date. You want to apply water as needed. You want to apply a sufficient amount of water to moisten the soil uh, to one foot. So that's an uh, inch or an inch and a half on sandy soils or two to two and a half inches on clay soils. So if you, you put enough water for 
if you put an inch of water on sandy soils, uh, that should be enough that it's going to moisten the soil down to to one foot. You want a jo a jo. You want a slow, gentle soaking of the root ball. So when you're when you're watering this, you don't have to water the whole hole that you create that you just created. You just want to water the root ball and just give it a nice, slow, gentle soaking. Uh, your rate of recovery, because obviously you transplanted the tree, the tree might suffer some uh, transplant shock. Um, and uh, what you really want to think about in terms of rate of recovery is one year for each inch of diameter. So the bigger your tree, the more years it's going to take for it to recover back to just uh, normal, um, normal growth. And so smaller diameter trees will actually outgrow and outproduce larger diameter trees sooner. Even though the larger diameter tree has more, it also has more that it needs to um, needs to get back in uh, back in motion. I kind of think think about this as people and just the idea if uh, if people get injured, if a if a baby gets injured. Uh, you know, it might, you know, a baby sprains his ankle and, and a day later is fine. A uh, 80 year old person sprains their ankle and it's going to take them, you know, a month to, a month to, to recover from it. Or even just the idea of somebody who's, um, a smaller person versus a much larger person. And the idea of how much pressure would be put on that, that ankle as opposed to from the from the larger person as opposed to the smaller person so it's it's that kind of idea that even though it's a smaller diameter tree it's got much less that has to just get back to normal as opposed to a big tree that has a lot of leaves and a lot of branches and, and a big stem that needs to all get back to to functioning normal your book talks about uh, doing a percolation test. I, uh, I attached a video right here of a percolation test so you can pause the lecture and go ahead and click on that link. Another one of our establishment techniques is using mulch and um, there are organic mulches and inorganic mulches. We really want to focus on the idea of using an organic mulch and the two main reasons for that are that it releases essential nutrients into the soil and that it improves the soil structure as well. It also um, helps with holding moisture and reducing competition and um, it's it's just it's got a lot of added benefits which are fantastic. We want to avoid uh, the mulch volcano which you can see here. Um, we do not want to put mulch on the on the tree trunk because that could the mulch could invite invite rodents or insects and then those rodents and insects could then um you know go and chip away at our tree and cause damage and we don't want that to happen so we actually only want our mulch to be about two to four inches high and we don't want it we want it around the tree but not um not around the actual um, stem of the tree we just want to put it up to the tree and then out from there we don't want to pile it on the stem uh, the broader the coverage, the better. You're going to get more reduction of competition from things like grass or other smaller trees, and you're going to get more moisture retention in the soil if, with the broader you make the um, the mulch um, circle. Uh, for a one to two inch diameter tree, you would want about a six foot diameter of mulch, so three feet of mulch in any direction. Uh, for even for a tree as small as uh, one to two inches in diameter. So, you know, the broader the mulch, the better off you're going to be. And mulch is fantastic. Uh, in terms of stabilization, uh, there's staking and guying. So um, you really want to only use this if, if necessary. If your tree cannot stand up... Um, on its own without this then you want to use it otherwise if the tree can stand up on its own don't do not stake or guy it uh, one to two stakes is common there are uh, you will see three stakes um, being used as well uh, if we're guying um, which we're gonna which is um, you know where we're tying down wires uh, you're only going to do that if the tree is four inches in diameter or larger uh, so here is an example of staking Right here, we've got it, our stakes, and then tied to our tree and holding our tree straight. And then we've also got our example of our mulch. So we've got uh, mulch. We've got a, 
we got you can see right here we can see the base of the tree easily we're not putting our mulch on our tree we're putting all of our mulch around our tree in this example they also use some compost which is great you know more organic matter the better um, but we only want to use about two to four inches of, of mulch here's some examples of just the idea of um, of um, tree stabilization so here we've got um, this is you can't see the stakes but you can kind of see the the stake in the background there um, but this is the system though big thing is we don't want to use things that are going to hurt our stem so nice wide flexible bands and um, you can see here the rope that's actually pulling um, pulling the the tree one direction or the other isn't isn't attached to the um, to the stem so the stress point is not going to be um, right on the stem which is good uh, if we're guying the tree down you can see these ones are going at an angle which kind of shows um, that they're being guyed and might be tied to a stake or some or something like that it could be wire it could be rope it could be um, cable whatever is used uh, to keep the tree in place and the big thing for me is just if you're going to do this it's because you have to because otherwise your tree is going to fall over otherwise there's no need to do it it's not going to help your tree grow straighter what's going to help your tree grow straighter is planting it nice and straight in the ground and making sure it's watered and making sure the roots are able to spread out so it can grow nice and straight and making sure you got the right kind of tree at the beginning and you made sure that you had that nice central leader so it's going to grow up nice and straight here is a picture of just tree staking essentials and just kind of going over um the what some of the ideas we've talked about earlier too so here's our root ball or our container containerized um, tree with with soil substrate whichever way you want to see it uh, we don't put it all the way the the bottom of the of the um, ball or the bottom of the um, of the container it doesn't go all the way to the bottom of our hole our hole is two to three times the width of our ball or our container substrate Right? Those are kind of some of those ideas we talked about. You want to put it right at the surface or maybe even a little bit above the surface. Um, and then you can see it's got it shows the soil kind of broken up because we wanted to, um, as we backfilled it and put it back in there, we didn't want to compact it or anything. We wanted to work it around that, that root ball or that container substrate and really make sure that it's um, nice, loose soil that allows for the roots to spread out. Uh, in terms of then our... Um, our stakes we want to make sure we put our stakes uh, wide where we're not um, going to be affecting the root ball or the container substrate at all we also wanted to um, make sure that we tie onto the tree as low as possible so if we could do it down here that would be great we never want to go more than two-thirds of the way up the tree usually um, about a third of the way up the tree um, halfway up the tree is probably where you're gonna see it uh, quite often and then if you want uh, more examples or more detail on uh, staking and guying trees, you can pause the video and click on the link right there. And then uh, in terms of planting specifications, planting specifications are going to be detailed plans and statements of particular procedures and standard and standards for planting trees and landscapes. The big thing when you're doing planting specifications is going to be um, to get clarity on your on your terminology so you know what does um, what what does uh, what's appropriate planting depth or what's what's an appropriate size for your tree or, or really being as specific as you can because then once um, once uh, push comes to shove when you're actually doing the work and people are asking you why are you doing it you can always say well this is this is the standard this is the guideline these are the specifications this is exactly why I'm doing this and you really want to be clear on as clear as you can on all the terminology and make sure every all the parties involved agree to that terminology uh, and then so where do you figure out that terminology and where do you kind of start out with so you um, use the American standard for nursery stock uh, that's going to give us a system of sizing and describing trees and shrubs and then um, 
in the best management practices tree planting and the uh, ANSI 300 um, transplanting standard, you're going to find um, specifications and, um, and guidelines to use uh, to come up with your uh, planting specifications. And then just here's an example to just um, try and pull all this idea together. So here's our original soil. Here's our um, burlapped and bald tree. Um, we want the hole to be two, two to three times as wide uh, as the diameter of the root ball. Uh, in this case, uh, probably the hole could have been a little bit wider. Uh, we've got our two to three inches of mulch. We can see our trunk flare is sticking out of the ground, so that's great. We didn't plant, uh, we didn't make too deep of a hole, which is the biggest and most common planting mistake. We also look here and we see that our mulch is not touching our tree, uh, our stem, which is fantastic because then we can avoid those problems with insects or rodents. Our burlap and twine uh, is cut away from the root ball, which is fantastic because then we don't have to worry about, um, about it getting girdled. And usually uh, if you use the biodegradable materials, then it's fine. It's just gonna, it's just gonna degrade away. And then um, hopefully our soil here is, uh, is loose. It's firm, but it's, it's loose and has enough um, space in it that water uh, can easily penetrate and our roots can easily penetrate. And then now we've got our um, added organic matter in our mulch that's also going to re release essential nutrients uh, into the soil. It's going to improve our soil structure. It's going to help with moisture, um, help retaining moisture and it's going to uh, reduce competition and we're gonna and because we started off at the beginning and we made sure we got a good looking tree a nice healthy tree good uh, branching structure nice central leader good root system that we're and we're gonna plant it nice and straight that we have a perfect uh, example of installation and establishment and that's what we're going for every time so hope you enjoyed that